Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to CARE and welcome to the unveiling of the 2016 celebration commemoration plaque here in the Memorial Gardens. Um, we're not going to have a lot of speeches because I'll hand over to one of the UN Veterans Association, Shawnee Cosgrave, to take over proceedings. We'd like to welcome the members of the, U the Irish Defence Forces, uh, the United Nations Veterans Association, Councillor Pat English and the mayors, fellow mayors and deputies, Superintendent, Acting Superintendent Inspector Eddie Golden and Sergeant Brendan Franklin and to everybody that's here today we would also like to this present time uh, thank the Tipperary County Council for a grant, a heritage grant that we got towards this and also to the outdoor staff who have been fantastic in getting the place ready. I would also like to pay tribute to the members of the Care Tidy Towns Group for the initiative here in the, in the grounds of the Memorial Garden. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge the contribution made by Philip Quinn, the sculptor, in preparing the stone. And also the ex-minister Michael Smith in helping to get the members of the Defence Forces up from Kilkenny here today. Without further ado, I'll hand you over to your MC, Sean Cosgrove. I'm very used to that. I fall through and show I knew I ran no coach special to show. Irene Nikoska, near the Oxidio. This morning in Nordum, very sure I came for you, Irene Nikoska, of the Labour Mock Public Nahirin. Ladies and gentlemen, you are very welcome here today on this special occasion to commemorate the Easter Rising 1916. It is a great honour for me to speak about the Rising and to read out the proclamation. I would now like to invite your Municipal Mayor, Mr. Pat English, to unveil the commemorative plaque. I would 
so like to invite Mr. Pat English to address you. Thanks very much, Sean. Um, I'm delighted to see so many people have turned out today to honour our um, 1916 uh, local heroes. And it's a, a great honour for me representing the people of the district um, to be here today. And just say thanks very much to everyone who's all, all organised today. Thank, thanks to the Army for coming out. Uh, it makes it a special occasion. And thanks to Shawnee here for organising. Thanks very much. I would now like to invite Acting Superintendent Inspector Eddie Golden to lay a read. We now observe a minute silence. The Irish flag. Although the 1916 Rising made the tricolour famous, it was actually first flown on the 7th of March 1848 in Waterford by the young islander Thomas Maher. He won to the New Ireland where Irish Catholics and Irish Protestants joined forces for Irish independence. On a trip to France to congratulate the French on the rebellion, he was presented with the flag which is based on the French flag. The white in the centre signifies a lasting truce between the Green, the Irish Republicans, and the Orange, the Unionists. Shortly before his trial, Maher, for his part in the 1848 rebellion, told the crowd who were gathered in Sleeve Namont to hear him that future generations will see the tricolour proudly flown across Ireland. On Easter Monday, the tricolour was flown from the top of the GPO. It was later used in the War of Independence and became the official flag of the Irish Free State before being included in the 1937 Irish Constitution. from Parry Pierce. If you strike us down, now we shall rise again and renew the fight. You cannot conquer Ireland. You cannot extinguish the Irish passion for freedom. If our deed has not been sufficient to win freedom, then our children will win it by a better deed. While no single event made the foundation of the Republic of Ireland inevitable, there is no question that the Easter Rising of 1916 was the defining moment in the ca campaign for independence from Britain. As ill-fated as the rising was, in the light of the terrible retribution it prompted, the 1916 rebellion was a galvanizing event that marshaled and re-energized what had been a divided movement. Public Nahern, the provisional government of the Irish Republic to the people of Ireland. Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and of the dead generations from which you received our old tradition of nationhood, Ireland through us summons our children to our flag and strikes for her freedom. Having organized and trained her manu through her secret revolutionary organization, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and through her open military organizations, 
the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizen Army, having patiently perfected her discipline, having resolutely waited for the right moment to reveal itself, she now seizes that moment and supported by her exiled children in America and by gallant allies in Europe, but relying in the first on her own strength, she strikes in full confidence of victory. We declare the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership of Ireland and to the unfettered control of the Irish destinies to be sovereign and indefeasible. The long usurpation of that right by a foreign people and government has not extinguished the right nor it can ever be extinguished except by the destruction of the Irish people. In every generation, the Irish people have asserted the right to national freedom and sovereignty. Six times during the past 300 years, they have asserted it in arms. Standing on that fundamental right and again asserting it in arms in the face of the world, we hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign independent state and we pledge our lives and the lives of our comrades in arms to the cause of his freedom, of his welfare and of his exaltation among the nations. The Irish Republic is entitled to and hereby claims the allegiance of every Irish man and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil, uh, civil liberties, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens and declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and of all its parts, cherishing the children of the nation equally and oblivious, oblivious of the differences carefully fostered by an alien government which have divided a minority from the majority in the past. Until our arms are brought about the opportune moment for the establishment of a permanent national government, representative of the whole people of Ireland, and elected by the suffrages of all our men and women, the provisional government hereby constituted will administer the civil and military affairs of the Republic in trust for the people. We place the cause of the Irish Republic under the protection of the Most High God, whose blessing we invoke upon our arms. And we pray that no one who serves that cause will dishonor it by cowardice, inhumanity, or rapine. In this supreme hour, the Irish nation must, by its valor and discipline, and by the readiness of its children, to sacrifice themselves for the common good, prove itself worthy of the august destiny for which it is called. Signed on behalf of the provisional government, Thomas J. Clark, Sean McDermott, Thomas McDonough, P. H. Pierce, Eamon Kant, James Conley, Joseph Plunkett. The flag will now be raised to full mass, followed by the last poet from the valley, and this will be followed immediately by the national anthem.
ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the ceremony at this location. The military and retired military personnel will now march to the castle. Proud, proud era. Before they march, let's uh, thank the rest of the to the castle and thank the castle staff for putting on the exhibition and the glass of local involvement of, um, in 1916. We'd also like to thank Paddy Roach uh, for playing the last post and I'd like to thank the George and for playing the national anthem. So now the mass will march back to the castle and we'll go through the way towards the castle.